In this video, we'll demonstrate setting up an aircraft with the appropriate International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, codes for communication, navigation, and surveillance equipment, as well as providing other required information that will allow you to successfully file an ICAO formatted flight plan. We will then show you how easy it is to file a flight plan using Garmin Pilot. Starting from the home screen, select Settings. Next, select Aircraft. The aircraft that we'll use for this example is the Cirrus Vision Jet, which has an ICAO code of SF50. We have already entered the basic information for this new aircraft, registration number November 814 Lima Whiskey, so select that aircraft to review and make entries. Near the top of this screen, you will see a section header labeled Aircraft. In this section, we can see the correct filing type of SF50 has been entered. If we had a specific model or variant, we would enter that optional information on the next line. But we can skip that. On the category line, we can see that airplane has already been selected. Since this aircraft has a maximum gross takeoff weight of 6,000 pounds, it fits in the light category for wake turbulence. Our airplane is blue and white, and our base airport is KFCM. And we can see that those entries have been made. Next is propulsion type which in our case is turbojet. Then we'll enter the maximum takeoff weight of 6,000 pounds. Entering maximum brake horsepower is optional, but we leave this one blank since we don't have that rating for our turbojet. The next section we'll look at is equipment. Most pilots are familiar with the FAA domestic filing codes, and here we will select slash G for the vision jet since we have GNSS or GPS and a transponder that is mode C capable. The next three entry lines concern ICAO specific entries for comm nav equipment, surveillance equipment, and performance space navigation or PBN capabilities. It's important that we select the correct codes here since this information is what tells ATC about our ability to accept certain clearances. Your Garmin Aviation team has developed detailed guidance to help you identify codes related to equipment and capabilities, and you can find this information on flygarmin.com. For specific aircraft, you'll find equipment capabilities listed in your approved airplane flight manual, or AFM, or possibly in an AFM supplement. Be sure to review this information when making selections for the equipment section. Okay, so now that we have reviewed the AFM, and any associated supplements, let's select our ICAO ComNav equipment codes. Tapping on this line, a window opens up that contains our selections. The first section here concerns general ComNav equipment, and most users will select S for standard. For an expanded explanation of each selection, you can press on the small letter I in a circle next to the selection. There you'll see an explanation of what is meant by standard equipment. Since we have this equipment, we will select S. Under the communication section, we can now see that the V selection is already selected and is grayed out. This will also happen for VOR and ILS selections found under the navigation section. Under the navigation section, we select codes for our navigation capabilities. Since we have SBAS, also known as WAS in the US, we can perform LPV approaches, so we need to select B. We also have DME, so we select that. Next, we have GPS equipment, but let's press the information icon next to that selection before we go further. Here, we read that the system must be approved for IFR operations, and since we have WAS equipment, we need to enter NAV slash WAS, GPS, or NAV slash SBAS, in the other information field. We will do this later in the setup process, so for now we just select G for GNSS. Scrolling up, we see that both L for ILS and O for VOR have already been selected as previously mentioned. The next three sections deal with equipment typically found in either commercial or military aircraft, and since this video is intended primarily for general aviation viewers, We'll skip these sections. The last section in this selector window is called Other. 
Since we have performance-based navigation approvals noted in the AFM for this aircraft, we need to select R for PB and approved. Taking a look at the associated information for this selection, we note that we will have to enter PBN levels in the ICAO PBN field. Finally, selecting Z lets ATC know that we will be entering additional COM or NAV information in the other equipment field. This will be for NAV slash WAS GPS or NAV slash SBAS, as previously noted. Now we move down to the ICAO surveillance line where we'll make selections for transponder and ADS-B equipment. By reviewing the Garmin Pilot's Guide for this aircraft, we determine that our VisionJet has a Mode-S transponder meeting enhanced surveillance requirements, providing ID and altitude information, as well as having an extended squitter, so our selection here is L. Next is selection of ADS-B equipment. With a GTS-855 Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System 1, or TCAS 1, we have both dedicated out and in capability on 1090 MHz, so we select B2. With an installed GDL-88, we have dedicated ADS-B in and out on the UAT frequency of 978 MHz, so we can also select U2. The next section here deals with ADS-C, which is a contract-based service similar to ADS-B, but mainly concerns commercial users, so we won't cover that here. Now we come to the ICAO PBN line. On an actual ICAO form, this information would be entered in field 18, other information, but Garmin Pilot collects that information here. Again, you'll want to reference your AFM or AFM supplements when making selections here. The VisionJet manual lists RNP-10 approval for oceanic and remote continental operations, so we select A1 in this section. For the en route phase, we have GNSS or GPS, so we select B2 for RNAV-5 GNSS. Under the en route and terminal phases section, we select D2 which indicates that during these phases, our GPS can calculate our position to within a one nautical mile radius at least 95% of the flight time. For the terminal phase, we see selections having to do with RNP, or Required Navigation Performance. Again, referencing the AFM, we see RNP1 GNSS approval, so we select that. Pressing the information icon for this selection, we see that RMP adds to RNAV accuracy by requiring onboard navigation performance monitoring and alerting. Now, under approach phase, we see four selections. Selecting the information icon next to S1, we see that RMP approach provides for straight segments and flyby turns and allows two-dimensional non-precision approaches, such as LNAV only as well as three-dimensional approaches with vertical guidance, such as LNAV slash VNAV or LPV approaches. This is our selection here. Note that the T1 and T2 selections are reserved for operators who have special equipment, receive special training, and obtain authorization from their regulator. This won't apply for most of us in general aviation. We have now completed the CNS sections of the aircraft setup. So let's look at the optional survival section. Under survival equipment, we can reflect the type of survival gear that is carried aboard the aircraft. Under life jackets, we can list attributes of the life jackets. Under emergency radios, if an emergency radio is carried, you can show that here. Most users could select ELBA, since this is the emergency locator transmitter, or ELT. Dinghy or life raft information can also be entered. Note that dinghy capacity has to do with total capacity of all life rafts carried. And the last section we need to fill out is the ICAO other information section. Pressing on that line brings up a window with multiple possible entries. Remember that we must put in additional information here concerning our nav capabilities. Pressing on the nav slash line, we type in SBAS. An often overlooked entry here is on the SIR slash line. 
Previously, we made entries concerning our ADS-B capabilities, so we need to enter 260B and 282B on this line. 260B indicates ADS-B 1090 MHz out, and 282B indicates ADS-B UAT, or 978 MHz out. One final entry is on the code slash line. This is the mode S code that you will find on the FAA's aircraft registry for your airplane. Look for the mode S code, base 16 slash hex, which contains six alphanumeric characters and enter that here. After entering all this, be sure to press save in the upper right part of the screen. To show how easy it is to file a flight plan using your new aircraft setup, let's go to the flight plan function. As you see, I've already entered a flight plan from Flying Cloud Airport in Minnesota to Fort Worth Alliance in Texas. The plan includes both a departure procedure and an arrival procedure. At the bottom of the page, I'll press the currently selected aircraft registration number and then choose our newly configured airplane. After ensuring that all of the other entries in that area are correct, I press on Create Trip. This takes us to the trip form page, where I can review all of the entries. At the bottom of this section, there's a remarks field and an advanced filing information field. In remarks, you can add information that you wish to communicate along with your flight plan. This is added automatically to the other information field of the ICAO format submission. Under advanced information, you can change certain ICAO entries for this particular flight. You can change the type of flight, add aircraft if flying as a formation, and enter a second alternate airport. Making additional entries in the other information field here will be added to the existing entries made during aircraft setup. The last section here concerns survival equipment. You would only make entries here if the equipment was different than what you entered during aircraft setup. That's it. Review the navlog, request the brief, and assuming you already completed your weight and balance previously, we're ready to file our flight plan. We hope you enjoyed watching our video on setting up ICAO codes in Garmin Pilot. For additional information about filing ICAO format flight plans and helpful tools for determining your aircraft's equipment and capabilities codes, visit flygarmin.com and click on the support tab. From there, you'll find a list of popular articles. Locate the ICAO flight plan article and click that. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the ICAO flight planning process and the capabilities of Garmin Pilot. Fly safe! Download a free trial of Garmin Pilot from the iTunes Store or Google Play Store.